Are you ready to party? Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back to our February monthly review. We have myself, Tim Fisher, Sam Komalafe, yeah. Danielle Cravat, Baltazar hashtag, uh, and <laughs> Jordan Jimmy Ola. Hello. We are back. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? Hello. 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 Welcome. Uh, why Welcome back. February. Here we, we are. Go. It's like, why are y'all awkward right now? I know. It's uh, like, we know something and you don't. I know. <laughs> well, hey. I think I feel like... The government. <laughs> oh, hey, let's oh, start. That was quick. Yes, yeah. let's actually jump right in this because there's a lot to talk about. In Wait, February. hold on, real quick. What's up? Quick question for you. Sure. Do you know who Danielle Fischel is? Danielle Fischel? Yeah. Do you know? Why her? does that sound really familiar? The girl from know. the office. You know, her? you know her, right? The girl from. The I office? just think we should have her on here. But oh, you're you know. <laughs> that's like the actress I was talking about. Sorry. Oh, our friend that we grew up with. All right. Well. I don't know what we're talking yeah, about. Let's right continue. Now. Who's Daniel Official? Hey, February. <laughs> no, hold on. Who? No, is it the actor you were talking about? That's who I thought you were talking about. The, the, she's the girl from the about? office. I have no, no idea who you're talking about. Girl in the show, the office. Well, let's keep on rolling. So no, it's black. We're not going anywhere until we tell me who this is. Who is it? <laughs> Topanga. Uh, what? Is, is that her real name? Yeah. Yeah, Topanga, if you're listening, please. If I hear Topanga, I'm on the show. I know, but you guys had me screaming like two episodes ago. So I just had to make that clear. <laughs> is it screaming in laughter or were you screaming in like, like you idiots? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> She's a beautiful woman. She's very beautiful. That'd be really neat if she came on the show. That'd be really cool. It would be really cool. Actually, we're going to start this month review out with um, a subject that is near and dear to my heart. That's not on here. It is Assistant Chief Tim Pill from La Habra Heights Fire Department. Getting arrested for impersonating a police officer. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, allegedly, as it goes, he... It's like the first week of February, right? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I, sh- I put the uh, his mugshot yeah. up. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. That guy. Wow. Yeah. So, he's... La Habra Heights is a volunteer fire department. Okay? Mm. The captains and chiefs get paid. It's not really that great. It's more or less experience, right? I was there for a little bit. Uh, a lot of people went through La Habra Heights to get experience to get hired. Anyways, this guy never got hired by a fire department. He always held down other people that were. So he went he went through the ranks over there mm-hmm. and finally got a captain spot because he got his classes. But the guy never worked for like a real fire department. Okay. So he's always kind of bitter. And I heard him one time to a background investigator talking shit about somebody who was a phenomenal person. Saying, no, you shouldn't hire him, all this stuff. I'm like, that guy oh, is yeah. a piece of shit. Yeah. So you can see where I'm coming from. Yeah. That's- he then somehow wheezes his way into becoming BC and assistant chief. And the vehicle that he takes home responds in as a BC. He was pulling cars over and for, for, for minor like traffic infractions. Really? Yes, which That's- is totally illegal. If anybody don't know that you can't do that as a firefighter. Uh, just impersonating a cop. And it's a yeah, felony. It's a felony offense. And uh, uh, that's pretty. Yeah, there's actually a couple, <laughs> there's a couple examples of things like that happening. There um, <laughs> are. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but this one, this story here, that's yeah. pretty crazy. So he was pulling people over. Okay. And then he's he got charged with like holding people against their will, kidnapping, because he was putting them in the back of the truck. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh my bro. god, he was taking them out of their car. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <sighs> and then allegedly from people I talked to as well, he had somebody in the office at La Habra Heights Fire, the the office secretary person, make him an ID card that we have, right? It says you work for the city as a firefighter, mm-hmm. but it's a police officer. Wow. What? Yeah. Really? So oh, he yeah. Had, like fake credentials as well. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So then he was going over to Arizona buying guns and bringing them back and selling to people because wow. he would go to these places. And as a law enforcement officer, you get kind of a deal. Well, Tim, <laughs> he. That's messed, terrible. Yes. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. Yeah. What? And what's crazy is that, like, how come like that was like a very short story? I do remember you making a post about it, but I don't remember seeing anything. I don't watch them like well, watch because, these channels all the time. Well, <clears throat> as all the stuff that Danielle came up with, uh, there's a lot of shit that's been happening in February. So that's it true. really, if we didn't have pandemic, <clears throat> Russia and us or whatever going to war, Ukraine and all this other stuff going on, it probably would have been pretty big news. They did cover it on Channel Five for like. Two minutes. Okay. The next so there morning. was at least a story about it. Yeah. That's true. Because uh, I do remember seeing something like that I think you, on the yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. It was like La Habra Heights. So to- total abuse of power. And the cool thing is his, believe his 
girlfriend, <clears throat> who is the fire chief's boss, was the city manager. Let's go. Oh, yeah. I believe. The plot thickens. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of... Oh, man. The political flux. It's, but you know what'll be interesting to see is what happens to him. Because there's the, the, there's a few other examples of that where there's no like jail time or anything. And, you know, I guess it, it would come down to if the person that he had pulled over is pressing charges. Mm. And in this case, like you said, kidnapping, because if he made them actually get out of their vehicle, physically put them in his vehicle under the assumption that he is some sort of law enforcement, there's got to be a huge... You know what it is? There, she's just going to make a lot of... Or <laughs> I assumed it was a woman. That's terrible. Um, How dare I think you? she got arrested, too, because they no. raided his house. No, no. I mean, like, the person that he pulled over, the way I was telling the story oh, yeah. was like it was a female. Like so a my, damsel my, in distress? Yeah, but, you know, because I feel like this guy looks like a creep, and I feel like that's, like, something... Well, he's 34. Yeah, he looks like he's 45. Do. Super fat, out of shape. Probably hates his life because he sees everyone leaving that fire department getting hired. He owns some tire shop over there in Woody or something like that. But... And see, to me, all those things you just checked box for, like that's what I think a person like that would be pulling over a woman. That's there, that's <laughs> yeah. that's my there justification and why I said that. Um, yeah, sorry. Well, he's yeah. well, he's. I think he's, he's done. Those are that's felony shit. I think that's gun trafficking. From what I understand, they're saying they might be going after gun trafficking. Okay, imp- impersonating a police officer and then holding someone against their will or something. <laughs> Do you think that he woke up that what morning? What just happened? It's so do you think funny. He, do you think he woke up that morning, had a bowl of Cheerios, was like drinking some coffee, and he's like, I'm going to do this today. And then when he drinks, he goes, ah. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> well, hear me, good though. Good idea today. <laughs> yeah, hear me out on this, but I think we've seen this with Chiefs and other places, departments, departments we work for. It's almost like when people in public service or even in politics, any type of government, when they start getting higher up in power and become Chiefs, they feel like they're untouchable. And they start making some dumb ass decisions, yeah. and but they're able to do that for a while because no one's keeping them in check, right? Right. And then finally one day it's like, oh yeah, we've been investigating you for two years. Uh, <laughs> you're Whoops. Done. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. And, and you know that's a good point though. Like that's just kind of I feel like how, how it goes most of the time. You know that people I feel like their demeanor changes. They can potentially you know like if they like subliminally like kind of strive for a power position once they get there. Who knows, you know, the type of person they're going to be anymore. Right. And the hard part is, it's like, who holds them accountable? You know, right. it's like, eventually the hierarchy position, it will top out at some point. And it's like, how does that get regulated? Because this, you know, this is crazy of a story as it is. It's not uncommon. I could tell you a couple other examples we don't have to talk about. But you know what I mean? Like, things like that do happen. And it's just, yeah, it's just crazy. Because it, it's like, what's the... What's the punishment for that? Should they actually go to jail? I mean, I think yeah, but <coughs> yeah. like, yep. but that's probably not what will happen. He'll probably get some sort of probation, and the city will come after him for an exorbitant amount of money. You know, I don't know. That's just yeah. uh, they're just, done. I mean, how do you how do you recover from that? Uh, I mean, they've had their own issues. How is the chief going to recover from that? Because it's been going on for like two years or more. Yeah. And they found stuff in his office, car. It's like, so the chief kind of probably knew about that, right? Duh. Duh. Come on, dude. Maybe. You know, I don't know. Anyways, he's fucked. Yeah. Well, hey, welcome to February. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Actually, uh, I sent him a text. What? I fucking oh, hated that guy. Yeah. I hate treat him like shit. Yeah. And I said, um, you're a poor representation of the fire service. Let me know what it feels like to get butt fucked in jail. <laughs> oh, <laughs> BF. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Hashtag bro. BF. Wow. Yeah, and then I fuck. I blocked him. <laughs> I just sent that shit and just blocked his. I was like, God, I fucking hated that guy, man. Damn. Oh. He was, he treated everyone so terrible, dude. So yeah. terrible. Karma, baby. It is. Okay. Anyways, all right. Let's get into Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You know what I think here? The first thing, did you hear what he said, that reporter? Was it the Fox reporter who asked him about inflation and politics? He's like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he said, do you think inflation is a political liability in the midterms? I think he got cut off and then pushed away. And he didn't realize, Joe Biden didn't realize the mic was still on. And he said, what a stupid son of a bitch. Yeah, he, hot, he got hot mic'd. Yeah, hot, yeah, yeah, hot mic. Yeah, hot yep. mic. And he, yeah, it was like, he was just like a disgruntled. And yeah. he's like, oh, he's stupid son he of a bitch. He <laughs> Which said, was a coherent uh, sentence, so good for him. Right. <laughs> oh, the actual question was, do you think inflation is a political liability in the midterms? And he said, it's a great asset. More inflation 
Biden deadpanned. What a stupid son of a bitch. Wait, he said it's an asset? Yeah, he said it's a great asset, more inflation. Ah, no one's going to worry about that. <laughs> I'm no sure. one heard it. Right. Right. It was like, whatever. He just goes up there and mumbles for 10 <laughs> minutes, and everyone's just like, oh, it's cool. It's normal. Yeah. It's okay. He said 80 it's, million people vote. I mean, that's guy. a legit right. question, million. too. It's not like it's, <laughs> right. you know, like. A, you can bring your mic down, by the way. I feel like it's. Good. (laughs) 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 Yes, he got hot mic'd. Oh, now uh, hear me out. If that was any other president, let's say if that was a if (laughs) hear me out. If that was a Republican president, I feel like they would have filleted him for a long time. Impeach. Oh yeah, it's time to impeach. Okay, again, I try to stay in the middle. I'm kind of for both sides. I'm fifty fifty, but. I do think it's one-sided in many ways. If that was a, a GOP Republican president, they would have tried to fucking cancel, impeach, it's over. But because it's Biden, he's following the agenda for the U.S. and, you know, whatever is the hot topic of the day, he gets a fucking pass. Yeah. Yep. But And it's like, it's crazy because it's like very public. It's like, it's not like, oh, I'm playing coy about anything. I'll just kind of shuffle things under the rug. It's just like... <laughs> Something bad happens, and they're like, hey, wh- what are we going to do about this? And be like, it didn't happen. <laughs> and then right. they're like, right, uh, Mr. President, you know, we need an answer. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's you crazy. Know? And then he and, just and walks off. Okay. And then the, 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 you know, the, the press is like, doesn't know, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> and then it's just the next day we're on to something different. It doesn't matter. Well, like, it just, it's weird. It's, it's, uh, it, it's like lying is accepted. And if we, we just tell them it didn't happen, we never talk about it again, it never happened. Dude. And I'm thinking that's so wrong. Right. I, do you think it has something to, sorry, do you think it has oh, something yeah. to do with the political party? Like, because they are, like, you know, uh, with the Democratic Party, like, they can maybe get away with more things that take, like, that, you know, like, when they when people look at them from a collective view, mm. you know, is it like, yes. you know what I'm saying? I exactly. Think, yes, because yeah, right. the liberal, or the media is so liberal. Exactly. So they're not going to do anything to make him look bad because they're for him. That's right. my thought. Exactly. That's where I was getting. Yeah. 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 I know. I totally agree. I think that that's, that is the drive, is that most, you know, not even, like, trying to go down political views of things, just that side has always kind of associated with um, like all the media stuff. Right. And then if you look at all the owners of these big media companies, like they're big Democrat donors and things like, you know what I mean? So without being conspiratorial, it's very evident that, you know, certain networks, which are a lot of them tend to lean certain ways, which don't grill the president when he's doing something bad. I mean, every once in a while they'll, you know, like CNN will run a headline about (laughs) Biden's like cognitive ability it's like they're kind of scratching at like, oh, maybe there's something going on here, but we can't like totally say it. Exactly. You know? yeah. It's like, well, well, we'll see. We'll see. You know? Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. I and think it's, it, dude, I, I just, his, his cognitive ability, like saying that you stupid son of a bitch, hot mic. And some, uh, did you see the other day um, when he was talking about something and he talked about a dead dog on his fucking someone's front lawn in politics? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm thinking, this is embarrassing. We're supposed to be the, the superpower country, the leaders of the free world with the best military, the most aircraft carriers, and this dude talking about a fucking dead dog on someone's lawn that makes no sense to the question asked is leading us? Yeah, I mean, they're worried about That's, Trump having the nuclear code. I, I know. But I was like, this guy, I guess the good news is he might not remember what it is, you know? So if you really like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Anyway, he showed it out, dude. What? <laughs> Are you okay? I'm okay. All right, all right, I'm, I'm okay. Here. Man. Okay. Also, reset. I reset. Yeah. Okay. What's the what's the uh, what's the word on the hey? What's the word on the crack pipes that Biden's buying? Oh, what, what's the deal with that? F- uh, oh what, like thirty million funding towards okay, it? Okay, so this is true. Yes, so, this okay. is very true. He's so, doing so, with our taxpaying. Dollars. Tick, it's, tick. Go oh. ahead. Take it. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> tick, you. Oh my Pass. God, this is the remix. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I was going. I'm Get so it. sorry. No, Get I was it. cutting you guys off. No, you're good. I got excited. I was Come like, it's actually bell. because it's not because it's not the uh, not to play the other side of this, but it's not crack pipes. Like you don't get like a crack pipe in the mail that's like it says fragile on it. It's open. <laughs> well, you, okay, that's good. Thank you. Because that's Uncle what Sam. I was thinking. So what it is, what it is, is a like a care pack 
but they call it something else like you know I don't know if it says user or something along the lines, but it's a care pack package. And in that package has miscellaneous drug paraphernalia to smoke out of. And one of them is for crack or meth, I'm assuming, or one of the, one of those heavier drugs. And, uh, but again, so essentially, yes, they're distributing crack pipes to everybody. Oh, you know, but so that's it's not what they're looking a little bit then. Well, it isn't, it isn't. It's like the, the the labeling isn't hey free crack pipes go nuts you know what i mean right. it's it's here's a here's a health package to help you make better decisions in your life i.e. using clean needles to shoot up or here's a new piece to smoke your crack out of you know like so uh, the labeling of it is a little bit different but essentially that is what it is okay and again I don't know how millions I feel about and millions that. and millions and millions of dollars to fund what clean needles to people you know I, i'm not saying no, I am saying I'm not for that kind of stuff. But, you know, like if you're going to make that decision, you should be smart about it. But does that come at the taxpayer's money to make sure that you destroy your life with a certain substance like safely? I think you said if, if you're going to make that decision, be smart about it. But I mean, I think that also you know, like the people that make that decision, they by definition aren't smart about what they do. You know, so yes, I, right. So it's, it's like, well, just another thing abused, right? Exa gonna... Exactly. And if you're going to do it, like, we're going to give you this, you know, um, this this cleaner way to do it yes. because we're helping you because you're going to do it anyway. Like the condoms to kids thing, you're going to do it. Yeah, wow. you know, you're, you're yeah, like, yeah, dude, right, right. Thirteen. You know? Those are yeah. great analogies. Yeah. There, I mean, I'm just saying, Nobody's like, you're true. giving you're them, true. you know, yeah. yeah. No, that's. I mean, that's. It's it's just the it's not just what it is. It's, there's like multiple things about it. One, it doesn't make doing something like that right. negative. Right. It takes that away from it, right? Other than it's like oh, super taboo, which it should be. Don't do heroin, like just don't. Like it's you know whatever. But um, <laughs> like don't do drugs. Uh, <laughs> anyway, where I was going with that is where uh, the it's, ribbon. It's not just it's not just the. Um, you know, the visual, the optics, it's the funding for it. It's the the distribution stuff. It's like all this to do projects like this cost millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. And it's like, again, going back to all the things we talk about a lot on these is like, it's basically the bureaucracy of how we spend our money. You know, the tax paper money, the one that we work for, the one that they drive up with, <laughs> with no cares in the world, it seems like. Yeah. You know, and then we are essentially funding... Like for people to be able to do drugs safely. Right. I don't. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, as far as them sending out a care package with clean needles and you know whatever drugs in it too. I, I just don't. I believe in government programs like uh, well, like if it's done correctly, welfare yeah. and other ones to help people get back on their feet or get them off of taking drugs or something like that. But. I don't know, giving out needles and shit? I don't know how I feel about that. Well, hey, if you're like, hey, I got $100 million, how are we going to budget this? They're like, oh, you know what we could do? We <laughs> could give everyone shit to do their drugs out of that's cleaner. And then we'll make it like reusable plastic. It'll be low cost. We'll pr you know, but it costs a $100 million project. Right, but aren't you know we enabling I mean? though? Of course. But that, I, I hear that what you're what, saying. No, but where I'm going with this, the, the irony of what I was saying is that instead of taking that money where you got like, oh, we got $100 million, what do we do? It'd be like, well, let's boost outreach programs to get people off the street and stop Just, using drugs. Yeah, to stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that, that cost item, because it's not as glamorous, because it's harder to show like results from that, mm. right? We could dump a billion dollars into it and into weeks nothing's changed and in two months nothing has changed that's like something that might take two years to start seeing the benefits from that yeah. but we don't we don't do that we want the quick fix so they can put their name on something and be like oh for this low cost item eco-friendly green you know deal now yeah. we can help people who are on the streets for a low cost it's just a win it looks optically like a win across the board but I feel like you're going to just start seeing more junkies and more homeless on the streets oh, sure. yeah. it's going to be that much easier to get all that stuff yeah that's a good point i because i we know there's a lot of good government programs out there it's the people that fuck it up the people oh. who abuse the system right and i believe this like with when COVID hit and all the relief funds there's going to be people going down in the next few years that absolutely frauded that system and abused it oh yeah. you know what i'm saying <laughs> from the people who probably really needed it to just making shit up and getting your money you know yeah i remember that the uh what company was it? It was a restaurant. It was oh, I think it was Ruth Chris. It was it was some one of those kind of chain nicer end restaurants. They got like twenty five million or something in 
and relief. Where I was like, dude, this is like a mega corporation that makes a billion dollars a year. They get twenty five you know million, I mean? but, but the business owner down the street, who's right, applying the for a hundred thousand dollars to get them through the next eight months, so keep people on payroll and all that other good stuff, they get shut down. Right, right. And that it's, it's the redistribution of the welfare state is the biggest problem I think that we have, like government wise, mm-hmm. and it just it sucks because we do have the power to do things to really help. In my opinion, obviously, it's not my field of expertise, but I feel like we could definitely do better, like a lot better quickly. But right. I, I just I just think that there's too many things that tied to self interest, and I don't think that um, until we can get past that part. Like, how are we really going to affect any kind of change? Yeah, I agree with you. It's funny because we see it all, right? Uh, and I, you think, like, does the government not see all the people abusing this shit? They just keep writing the checks? They, they have to. <laughs> I'm like, what the exactly. fuck? Exactly, they have to, it's right? Like, oh. They have to not see it. Because otherwise, when you go, you're like, oh, this, this person lives in, like, you know, let's say, like, some kind of HUD housing, right, where they have government funded to keep them in. Not against it, for it, if you're using it to get better, you know, yeah. or, or pursue your life. But you have these people that'll have that. They'll be on some sort of, you know, financial substitution for food, like food stamps, things like that. And then they'll have a Maserati in the driveway. Think, oh, you know what man. I mean? You know, sorry, I was going somewhere with that. I was yeah. just trying yeah. to build the, uh, you I know. I felt like that's where you were going. Oh, uh, okay. I was thinking you were going to say like Mercedes, though, or something. No, I'm t- just but, over a yeah. hundred thousand dollar yeah. car. We'll put it that well, way. Well, I is. agree with that when you see somebody driving a lug luxury car right yeah. and they're on their iphone yet they're pulling out food stamps i'm like there's something wrong with the fucking system yeah the priority of that person's way the fuck off oh i mean it's a it boils down to there's how do you how do you check that you know what i mean because True. the in the scenarios that we're talking about here more than likely that person however they they get income or their nails the are always fresh too it, and that's right? expensive absolutely <laughs> <laughs> you wagon having fancy yeah. nails every three days. I, I get it, but like if you're if you're in that scenario and then you have like multiple fronts of like social help, like care or welfare care, then like that's fucked up. You know what I mean? Like the money that you're making is probably enough to you know get you off the ground or off these programs. So, I mean, then again, it's like who am I to judge? Right? That's what it really boils down to. I don't, uh, I don't know. I can't I can't be there, but. <laughs> Anyway, I just hate having that argument because I feel like that makes sense, and then people will still shoot it down. Like you're like, you hey, don't know what Jordan, you're talking about. Jordan, just stay in your lane, all right? <laughs> Jordan, just stay in your lane. Just like, do I don't better. Even have a lane. <laughs> like, one lane for everyone to share. Like that's the thing. Like uh, I want us all in the same lane. Uh, have you guys uh, heard about what's happening in Ukraine? Yes. What well, I mean, let's let's talk about that because I think that's kind of a big deal, right? We got it's Russia a huge with deal. they have a bunch of their troops on the border of Ukraine. Um. This Biden kinda, sent 8,000 plus troops over to Europe, right? Yeah. This is kind of like backing several months back when we were discussing like, you know, I, it wouldn't be surprising if something happened like another 9-11. Mm. Like it's things are building up. Like just because it didn't happen immediately doesn't mean something may not it's happen. True. Like it, true. I just, in my mind, I just keep seeing things like building building right. to that point well, right did you hear, like a snowball um, right now that's yeah, how i keep looking at it and then uh who was it bill gates he was pretty it's almost like he just warned us there's gonna be another pandemic like okay so you have do you guys have something planned since the you know, COVID's dying down or lifting vax mandates hopefully most places we're in a state of emergency yeah i mean did i'm like you know i don't i don't <laughs> when he said there's gonna be another <laughs> pandemic like come on dude yeah you're gonna get people to revolt oh man we gotta work we got things to do could take over families, you know what I'm saying? But that, but that crisis in Ukraine, I think, is a big deal. Because I read an article today on, um, don't quote me on this. I think it was, oh, Newsmax, and that I think it was a European prime minister, whatever you want to call it, someone high up in government Europe said that Russia is making is going to make this war worse than World War II. And I was like, oh, I read it this morning. That's really yeah. So I have he's a- warning us, and he's asked. They're asking for help from the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, if you're Ukraine, you're totally needing you're, well, support yeah. from anybody because <laughs> Russia's army is pretty massive and they don't probably have the air power to fight them back. But um, air power, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> now, uh, this whole scenario <laughs> is pretty crazy because, like, I I have a, a mixed feelings about it. Because, like, I mean, I've, dude, I was reading a little bit about oh, this. Go for and, it, babe. Go for it. And, um, <laughs> The part that makes me like kind of question stuff is that like so if you go off of how Russia do you remember when they invaded Crimea 
Yes. You guys remember that? It happened like that. Instantly. Like there was, uh, so it, it's all out of the same setup because like how do you move massive amounts of people without saying it's like training or something, right? You know, I feel like logistically if you did that, everyone's gonna be like, oh, what are they doing? But in this case, using that example, they moved, they said it was for training purposes and then it was like the next day they took over Crimea. So when this stuff is setting up, what makes me question things is that it's taking very long. Right. Like if you if they're in a position to like strike while the iron's hot or, you know, take over a time of weakness or whatever, they had some turmoil in that country. There was some shit that was going down with the president like two weeks before this came out. I don't remember exactly what was going down, but it was kind of like public. Right. So then it's like, OK, then Russia makes a move. And then now all of a sudden on a world display, everyone's talking about it. The United States is talking about it. Biden said specifically, like, he'll be like, oh, I don't think anything's going to happen. We're going to hang out, you know, this next week. Oh, and by the way, there's a real chance that they're still going to do it. You know what I mean? Like publicly, it's been jammed down everyone's throats that this is going to happen, which makes me think it's not. And the reason is because it's like taking away from something else that might be going on. That's true. That I know that um, Saudi's been bombing Yemen like crazy. Yeah. No one's talking about it. No one's talking about it. Right? Like, why? That's, it's, yeah, that's right. a big deal. I'm thinking, why, what, what's trying to be hidden right now, right? Just like um, they have been talking about Ghislaine Maxwell, but did you also see that um, Jeffrey Epstein's right-hand man yes. fucking suicided? Yes. Murder, or, excuse me, suicided in jail. Yeah. And now it's like... Dude, what the fuck? I'm telling you, man. I don't know why that pumps me up, but it's just like, it's just another thing where I'm like, see, yeah. something's happening. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. you know, and then the article I read, I think it was CNN that they, they, uh, they even said in like kind of the tail end of the description of like, or not the description, but the conclusion uh, thing. They said that like it mimicked Epstein's murder. Ooh, and then that was it. That was the end of the article after like talking about who this person was. He was like a CNN ta- said he was that? a talent scout. Okay. That used to do like stuff with like supermodel or talent agencies, but then was funneling these young girls oh, like, to Epstein. He was a, he would come in contact, right? He oh, was a he was grooming. talent scout. Yeah, talent scout. That's so terrible. It's God. terrible. It's absolutely yeah, terrible. But that's what, who this piece of shit was. Right. Gets tied in. I was like, I didn't even read in anything of why he was arrested in the first. No place. one knew. I didn't know he was in jail. Right. I had and no idea. And now he's dead in jail again. And then I, I see. I, I couldn't like find two articles that said the same thing. So I'm going to say this is just, you know, what I love that you do research like that. Well, because I don't want to like say something on here and then it's like, you only read one article that said this one thing. Right. It's like, well, <laughs> fuck, you might as well got it on Wikipedia, you know? I mean, it's true. And so in this case, but just to make it fun, is they said that the video recording was off. That's no it. way. I haven't, but I haven't found another one that has... Oh, Confirm that I read that though actually as well. I don't know where same, it was. My, probably this may have been the same article. It was an offshoot article. Like it wasn't like a, a at least a publication that I was like, oh, I've heard of them before. Well, it's you know, like they don't like, want eh. it to be big news right now because what is it, Prince Andrew? They paid off that girl. Yeah. Now it's dead in the water. No one's ever gonna know what happened. Yeah. I mean, Shocker. come on, dude. He just got like stripped of his title stuff, right? Well, yeah, and they're pulling him out of the limelight. He's done. Yeah. <laughs> He's Poor gonna Prince Andrew. They're gonna they're gonna what put him gonna in do? some little uh, you know heavenly cave that they made and just funnel little girls to him through underground tunnels. He'll live it like the four <laughs> seasons Hawaii, dude, for the rest of his yeah. life. He's going to be fine. He's fine. And he'll Fuck only get 100000 a month allowance. Yeah. <laughs> but that's my thing. It's like, like mommy, it's, it's, how am I going to survive? <laughs> yeah, it seems like both sides of the ocean are trying to cover this up. And my thought is they are doing this because there's so many powerful people they have shit on. Yeah. yeah. It would take down so many powerful people. That's, that's so they why just I keep hiding it. it and hiding it and hiding it. You don't see news articles of uh, that guy who is Jeffrey Epstein's talent scout in jail. We still haven't heard really much about Ghislaine Maxwell. <laughs> I'm just Nothing picturing though. like Mr. Freeze in like the cell, and he just lights up when these people <laughs> when these people get dusted off. Like they're like waiting for him, they just lit up. There was a. <laughs> Talking about like from Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze. From Arnold Schwarzenegger, we mean from Batman and Robin. Ooh, that's who played Mr. Freeze was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger, yeah. but it's not based off of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. No, Rude. we're talking about Mr. Fre- <laughs> Take the <laughs> call me in the morning. I know the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, but hey, oh, no. the, uh, the the cartoon that I saw, somebody had Hillary Clinton. Over that guy who's in jail, fucking choking him out, and she's just smiling. It was so great. <laughs> Nothing it was to so see great. here. 
Number 42, I think, I we're at on the list. But hey, to go back to the Ukraine. got to make some new friends. J- Jordan, do you have anything else on the Ukraine thing? Uh, oh. what it, like the meaning of it? Spe- any specifics? Well, uh, the, it's just the implications of what it is. So like, like Russia. Okay. The only reason why I know, know this is because I learned it in like a counterterrorism class I'd taken a long time ago, but they're talking about like Russia and like why they do certain things. Like the big push for them is that they don't have like warm water ports, like for military and like transport. So most of their coastal access, it's like, 80% or something is shut down 10 months out of the year because of the ice. So it's like their push like has always been towards a warm water port. So it's like Crimea, for example, right. warm water port. Ukraine, massive warm water port. I think it's the Black Sea is the one that they uh, border. But now they have essentially control of that area if you push through. So it's oh. like, so, and I'm not saying that's, hello, I'm not saying that's the only reason that they're doing it, Yeah, you know, but I'm just saying like as far as. It makes sense. Right. So it's like there's always a push for, uh, you know, as far as reasoning, not just power. But in this case, you know, it'd be coastal access, which makes sense. Right. So it's like, are they really going to do it though? And then it's like, you got to look at it like, well, what are the ties that we have with these countries? I know our president has some specific ties with his son in Ukraine. So, and on, China. And China, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, why is it really happening? I think there's too many things to list. But I also think that like, this might be, like I was saying earlier, like kind of a, you know, because I mean, and then you got to think about it too. It's like, well, what are they going to do? Ukraine's not a small country. No. And it's like, they're really going to actually have a war, like an all out war. And I know that it happens and like, a lot of Middle Eastern countries and the Baltic areas, like things like that. But now this is on public display everywhere. So yeah. it's like countries are going to be forced to have to to get in. And I, I don't know, is Ukraine a part of NATO? No. no. They're not, That's the right? Problem. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem with us going in and helping, um, helping defend Ukraine is because they're not a part of NATO. So that brings up a diplomatic nightmare. Yeah. The diplomacy with all that is very, I don't know if it's complicating, but it's really hard to explain. Do you think that the president of Ukraine told Biden, like, hey, if you don't help us, I'm going to take all the information that we have on you and your son's connection of That's how you guys really make money, theory. and I'm going to put it all out there. That's a really good theory. Right? So it's like you, the United States might have to keep their foot in the pot on this one just because Ooh. to save face from the top level down. Wow. Yeah, conspiracy Fucking shit, Jada. right? Oh, that was yeah. really good. I never thought of that because they are in bed with him. Here's wow. the thing. there It's so complicating if we do back... Ukraine because it's against Russia and Russia is in bed with China. Mm -hmm. China holds our fucking debt. They're also trying to take over Taiwan. So you don't see I'm saying we're like we're how all this kind of encircles itself. You're kind of fucked either way. You get involved. You know what I'm saying? China. Oh my God. There's so many ties to things. The 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 ties are everywhere. Is all working in conjunction together. Right. right? Because Russia and China are in bed together. They both hate us. They want to be superpowers. They also see that there is a big chance to do that right now because Biden's not mentally with it. You have to be real with yourself. He's out of his the fucking door mind. Open right now. Yeah, and then on top of that, Russia and China are also friends with Iran, and Iran fucking hates us. Yeah, they were, and they all have fucking nukes pointed at us. Yeah, did you see? This is a uh, two days ago. Um, there was an article that just came out talking about because uh, right now we we do not allow Iran for like we put them on like. Nuclear caps or something like that, or right. um, I'm they don't sorry, follow that. They don't. Well, do probably not. But I just saw an article that said that now they're trying to go in negotiations to give them like clearance for nuclear reactor for like energy purposes, which we all know that's like bullshit. such crap. It's yeah, such but crap. but I, what I'm saying is like as those tensions build, like you were just saying, as far as like labeling the connections. Well, what we are doing as a country, we immediately step in and be like, try to ice it over, like with one of them, like, hey, we're cool, right? We'll let you guys do some shit. Okay. Cause if shit goes down over here, Uh-oh. sorry. Are you good? If shit goes down over here, like, we don't want you against us either. Right. You know, so I, it's, God, being the president must be the most stressful job. Well, that's why they the age world. so much. They age so fast. Just <laughs> when they go in, they're like. He was already old going in. Oh, my God. I don't know. I thought he was going to look like. Now he's just keeper. like. Bobbly, bobbly, bobbly. <laughs> <laughs> bobbly, and then he walks off. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. What do we? I got still don't here, think he's going to make all four years. That's just. Oh, I, I don't really see don't. him even reaching the third year. 
No. I don't see There's, there's no way. Here. And then Kamala Harris is missing. You haven't heard from her in forever. <laughs> no one knows what the hell she's doing. <sighs> we did it, Joe. Yeah, it's so <laughs> stupid. Anyways, okay, let's talk about Super Bowl, okay? Because this one, I had a lot of fun watching a game in the halftime show, but there's some shit, like, you see pictures of Gavin Newsom, celebrities, Mayor Garcetti, all these people say we're in a state of emergency. Did I say Garcetti wrong? I don't know. It, One just more the time. Pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> it was right, but like you said, it was like a like, was a, like an accent or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. like a, we were like yeah, dogs yeah. with the head tilt. <laughs> Everyone was like, <laughs> oh, wait, wait, Garcetti. That's what you said. Garcetti. Yeah, Garcetti. And I thought you like, said Guy Fieri. <laughs> oh, dude. Guy Fieri. Please come on the show. Guys, <laughs> um, and then actually Emmett Smith. Who was the other one? That South African actress. Um, oh, she yeah. was in. Um, they were all really good at holding their breath. That's all I guess. Uh, <laughs> well, Olympic divers. It was. It was great because ah, I saw this video on social media. Somebody made right. They showed pictures of all these celebs and the mayors and the governor all at the Super Bowl, and then you see he puts after all their tweets. Wear a mask. Do the right thing. Mm. Everyone need all this support for being vaxxed and wear a mask. I'm on to you. Yeah. And then <laughs> Super Bowl comes and they don't even follow their own rules. It's incredible. Yeah. Sean Penn, Matt Damon. I was trying to think of all the people that yeah. were LeBron. Uh, Charlie Stern. You got Charlie Yeezy. Stern. Charlie Stern. He's yeah. all there. I would give J-Lo a pass. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I give them all a pass because it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know? But uh, just uh, more ironic, right? That they... It's hypocritical. It's yeah. BS. Uh, and then, and then, all the while, kids in school are being forced to wear masks. Uh, I, saw, I saw a post. Someone no. was like, "They should just start having school classes at that stadium at SoFi." Oh, oh. no, it's awesome. <laughs> so they don't have to wear a mask in there. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a couple things with that one. Didn't uh, Eminem have some? I'm actually some. Oh no, go ahead. No, I don't know. I, no, I think that, Eminem, that was going to swing. What I was going to say was going to swing it in a, diff, a somewhat different route. Well, uh, no, I was just saying that the Eminem thing. Danny might know this, but I think it was more in remembrance of um, an artist, Tupac, we, wasn't it? What are we talking about? When Eminem took an E, I was under the impression he did it in remembrance of Tupac, and out of respect. I thought he was Ray just was, doing it because his weeks, his knees are weak and his arms are heavy. So. Oh. <laughs> Solid. I mean, I'd know too. <laughs> There's Bob on his sweater already. That one got you Bob's got spaghetti. <laughs> Bob's spaghetti, bro. It's so bomb. I already got vomit on him. Bob on out. Already. I don't need to show that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That was good. Uh, but what what was the reason that he kneeled? Am I right or wrong? Or um, honestly, I didn't think anything of it when I saw it. I didn't. And really it wasn't either. until I started seeing memes and articles or people saying this, like some. I'm hearing some things like it's going towards like the Kaepernick thing. Like, well, okay, but he didn't. Kinda... He didn't do it during a national anthem. No, you know. Yeah. So I didn't. Honestly, I, I didn't I, give a crap. I was like, again, I don't dude. know how solid this info is either. But another thing, I heard something along the lines like he brought it up that he wanted to do it, but right. they told him don't do it, and he did it anyways. I don't know how solid that is, but that's just things. Okay, I've well, heard. hear me out on this. But okay, he was he didn't do it during a national anthem, right? Which is usually where everyone gets very upset. And I can understand why. I come from a military home. We have a lot of men and women who sacrifice for our country for our right to be here and protest, okay? And have these football games and enjoy life in America. He did it during a halftime show, during some of the best classic rap music and show and a dance, everything that went on. So my thought is it could be ter- interpreted many fucking different ways. That's I'm <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> You're absolutely right. right. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. Yeah. the way he knelt and when he did it, it to me, you know, people can get upset, but he, he didn't do it during a national anthem. So no. it, could, it could mean so many different things. It could have been for the song, for the artist. Who knows? Yeah, dude, well put. Like, because I thought that, because I, uh, I didn't even notice it while I was watching the Super Bowl. And then, like, I, I just thought it was at the end. I, you know, not to like make a pun end on the song. I thought it was but, like end scene. Yeah, you know, <laughs> some people finish in like the the Superman's landing stance. You know what I mean? Like that was the right. sign off. I thought he was gonna and, stand up. But he was there for like he was there for like a minute, and it was just like, all right, well, whatever. And then they're panning out. Show goes on, and then it was afterwards. It was saying, oh, it took a knee because I. There was a couple things that were staying because maybe he had voiced it that he was going to do it. They said no, so he did it anyway. But what, regardless of whatever he was on his knee for, 
It was not during the national anthem. Right. It wasn't in. It wasn't in protest of highlighting police or military or anything. It was literally just at the end of the song. He took it. So it's like, so what if they fucking said no and he did it anyway? It's like he's. That, and that kind of the the shtick, right? right? You know, don't be doing what you're told, kind of thing. Rap, I I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. well, what I'm saying is that it was like, why is this even a thing? Right? Like, who's fucking caring? Right? You I know, would have, I would have never noticed it had I, and anybody same, had said same. anything. And it may, I, you know, and this is just being devil's advocate. But everything I saw on social media, it was more Republicans getting upset. I'm like, you guys. Okay, you're you're. I don't know if you're maybe taking it out of context, but it's like you got to chill out. It was a fucking halftime show. It was a great performance. They hit all the fucking classics. I had a blast watching. I didn't think anything of Eminem taking any. Dude, uh, when DRE came on, I was like, yeah. oh my yeah. God. It was, was so good. <laughs> it was so good. Was anyone else not worried about the Rams losing? No, it's exactly. Right, it's exactly. That's what I would feel like most of the people were probably concerned yes, with. Is I like, think, hey, the Bengals are looking pretty fucking good today. We, we might lose this thing. Yep. That five to eight I just minutes. went right back to eating. <laughs> <laughs> that five to eight minutes, bro. I forgot about everything in my life. Oh, yeah. I yeah. was fu- oh, yeah. memories came back from school, oh, yeah. friends, family. Yep. I was like, "Fuck, dude, let's go." I was I was actually disappointed that it didn't last longer, or they didn't yeah. each do like more. Like I wanted Eminem to do more than just one song. Right. I did too. I was kind of like, yeah. I mean, I get it. It was it seemed like it was more highlighting Dre and his, you know, yeah. being almost like a godfather, right, to to the rap industry in, in that time, but. Um, I really wanted to hear another song by Eminem because Snoop yeah. did a couple, yeah. Dre did a couple, even you know Fifty Cent looking like fucking two dollars. Hey, <laughs> oh, look out. I thought he looked like a fifty dollar buck, but you know uh, fifty dollar. I was bucks? looking at him, oh, like I was looking thick. <laughs> fifty dollar buck. Oh, nice fifty dollar bill. Fifty dollar bill. <laughs> Anyways, he looked heavy. Yeah. Well, hey, you know what? <laughs> heavy. Yeah. I love you the know? memes. Oh my god! Like the one where oh, that yeah. chubby, Classic. the chubby kid's hanging upside down by those ankle things <laughs> in his, in like his closet, like Fiddy waiting for his line. <laughs> uh, Dude, the memes yeah. from that were pretty freaking awesome. Oh man! I would say Dying. though, that was that was my favorite halftime show of any oh, yeah. sport, uh, or that, excuse me, yeah. football or in the. Um, Super Bowl ever. Yep. It's freaking awesome. It was pretty good. I don't know. I yeah. went wild when I heard Missy when she came out for Katy Perry's a couple years back. Oh. I didn't care for Katy Perry, so I was kind of like, whatevs. But when Katy I Perry's heard her coming good. out, when I heard her coming out, I was like, ah! And I like pushed everybody aside and yeah. I had to. You know, people dance. actually. Uh, <laughs> I was trending, I think, on Twitter and some other social media sites, but people were talking about Snoop Dogg. And they're getting upset that oh. there was pictures of him fucking hitting a blunt before he went. Oh, like okay. he was on stage right right before it started. Yeah, and he bent down, took a hit, and they're take, someone's taking pictures. I'm like, you guys, would you expect anything less? I was just right. gonna say, right. it's gonna, shocker, yeah. Yeah. It's Snoop Dogg high yeah. for I like, everything. I like how the media tried to do a spin on that too, yeah. and everybody's just like, huh? Nobody fucking cares. Like, like, everyone's like, Get have out you of met here. him before? You know. But did you, you see know? like? Three days before, was it three or four days before? There was some shit that came out that there was like a potential like harassment issue with Snoop, oh, with Dogg. Snoop Some girl like, came forward saying that he'd like harass, what, whatever. Yeah. But it was like, oh man. And then just right before the concert, he's just like, fuck it, man. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what, what are you going to do? You know? Listen to me. Like, I mean, bullshit. that's got to be the ultimate, right? You're, you've been, in, he's been in the rap game for 20 plus years. Some of the biggest songs we listen to to this day, he wrote. And now, you know, at a time during that time, rap was kind of an issue, right? People were hating on it. Oh, they fucking hate police. Remember out there that time? Yeah. People thought fucking yep. only thugs listen to rap music. Really and now, man. now these guys who people hated on and want to put them in jail and talk shit to music are playing at the Super Bowl, the biggest event of the fucking year, and everyone's cheering for them. I feel like they also you can't have... tell a better fucking story than that, dude. Also, it's amazing. I also feel like they have like I don't want to say like the cleanest record, but. They're not no, the like in question, drama. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. What would you consider? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I don't want to say that because obviously, <laughs> I, I but, le- records, but you right? don't see them like Maybe. all these. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? I get what you're saying. They're, like, they're, they're not in the public eye cool, for though. negative reasons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right. Compared to others or new up and coming yeah. or, you know, they're stuff iconic. like that. Exactly. They're, the, they're, like, they're exactly what you said. As soon as the first song hit, it was like it everyone, was like everybody in the world yeah. was like, yep. yup, dude, yeah. we all went back to that time, that era. I, I just love it because, God, they got shit on so hard. I don't know if you saw the documentary. Um, what was the documentary with Dr. Dre and... No, I didn't see it, dude. 
Oh, uh, I probably saw it, but yeah. I can't think of the title. Anyways, but it's just cool because they're not documentary of hip hop in those early times. Man, they got fucking shitted on for their art. Mm -hmm. They wanted to express themselves, and they were just getting shit on hard. And I laugh because look how times have changed. Oh, man. Right. It's like you went from they went against the flow. They still fought for what they believed in their art, in their music, to represent themselves and their community. And now they're being revered as the upper echelon of performing at Super Bowl. I fuck, you can't tell me of a greater American story. You know what I'm saying? That's just, Those are the shit I love. Can I you love imagine how different the music game would be if Pac and Biggie were still alive? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yep. Oh, Can you imagine those two up there with different. them performing? Oh, I would lose it. I don't care. I'd spend. I don't care. What if they didn't? How come much of any more hits? Is, I would go. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, you. Would. Yeah. Look at Fat Joe. I love those Look questions because I'd be oh, like saying like. Speaking of Fat Joe, right. I think okay. I have <laughs> to shit on him. I love those. Oh, I awesome like. Music. I like his. I, I think he was one of somebody that I. I just saw a quick article, but I didn't write anything on it. Like he was complaining about something. That he wasn't up there on stage. You know what? It might have been what? against Joe Rogan. It was Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's what it was. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw. Okay. Well, I because Fat, Fat Joe. Joe, yeah, yeah. he's got he's got like back, right? yeah, he he's that's probably a, got what three or four hit thing. songs from that time, early two thousands. They're whatever. bangers. They're still good, but you don't right. hear them anymore. Yeah, dude. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's like everyone's go-to dance move on the floor. Right. I know. Anyways, Super Bowl. I enjoy the halftime show. I think it's the best we've had in a long time. Also means we're getting old because yes. remember that time in the nineties when the Rolling Stones went on early two thousand. We're like, what the fuck? This is old. And there was a music. ton of people who are having this exact conversation. Yes. Yep. like the fucking Stones. <laughs> exactly. That was the best you know? Super Bowl ever. Huh. I was yeah. like the Super Bowl. I like the uh, I like Bruno Mars. I don't know if you guys remember. He's when a he performer, did that. dude. He is yeah, he performed. Man. He's he's fucking legit. He was yeah. moving that entire time. I know. At a hundred percent, dude. Dude, he's I, like I lose my pants. shit if they brought like NSYNC and Britney back, or like those pop people. I would lose it. Like, hey, how, it's how gonna you, be me. Oh, I would. I would. I'd be <laughs> screaming. What you <laughs> What you guys thought? What about like? <laughs> What about uh, Weird Al Yankovic performing at the Super Bowl? No. Yeah, no. Wow, why is everyone shooting down so fast? Why are you pumping it up so much? Well, because <laughs> wait, <laughs> this, is, Al this is more. <laughs> he's he's done some good remixes of hits. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude, Timothy. The Amish Paradise, yeah. where he did a Julio <laughs> cover <laughs> for Gangster's Paradise. That was that was pretty popular for him. Oh, he's so good. Let's talk about Joe Rogan and Spotify. This is huge. This has mm -hmm. been ongoing, and to me, he's he's won. Oh and yeah, he's winning. So, who was the first artist? I'm trying to remember the artist that Neil Young. Neil Young, Neil Young <clears throat> removed like his Jody music, right? Mm -hmm. And said he wouldn't come back on until they removed Joe Rogan. And there were some other big artists. The funny thing is, I can't remember the last time I listened to Neil Young or those other artists who I, my theory, are jealous of his Spotify deal. Uh, yeah, I mean he's making a shit ton of money, but I mean just uh, I don't know, like, you know, is it? It's a uh, it was an opportunity, at least the starting process of this. Is it like, oh, because, you know, he was obviously generating or is, though, he generates a ton of uh, publicity. But, you know, with the controversial, like, vaccine stuff, right? And then it was like this big push and misinformation and all these, you know, you saw it all over the news. There was like this little short s stint of, you know, Joe Rogan spreading misinformation. And then the next following up that was Neil Young's out. Because until they pull it from Spotify. And it's like, dude, I mean, obviously, Hall of Famer, performer, singer, songwriter, the whole thing. But it's like, who are you? You know, your time's up, bro. Yeah, dude. Yeah, like, like, you're not relevant anymore. Last ditch effort. What, I didn't to make know some who money? he was. Dude, I was really? like, no. Neil Young? If somebody had told me that and they say, think of a, say a song. I probably have heard a song, but I probably wouldn't have known. Right, you're saying like if a song came on the radio, I just would have been like, okay, bye. You'd be like, oh, it's <laughs> like, a cool song, and someone'd be like, oh, it's Neil Young. You'd say, oh, okay, oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, the same. But I, th I think it's ridiculous because <clears throat> that didn't work, right? People are trying to cancel him, right? Trying to cancel Joe Rogan, which I, when this first happened, I thought it was gonna be really interesting because he he does have the biggest single platform in the world right now. He's bigger than Fox. He's bigger than CNN, CBS. I mean, he gets 11 million views per episode. So they want to take him down because this guy, maybe I'm wrong if you guys don't agree, but Joe Rogan, he's good at asking the right questions. He's not biased. He brings on everybody. He'll bring on, <clears throat> he brings on scientists, straight people, transsexuals, homosexuals. He brings on these elite runners, Navy SEALs. He gets a full broad spectrum. So you can't tell me that this guy is racist or he, yeah. he you know what I'm saying? 
or censor him. Like this guy's, he doesn't lean on anyone's side. He's who he is. So that doesn't work. So then they bring out the racist thing, mm. right? Somebody mashes up a video of every time he says the N-word. And I actually want to ask you this, Sam. With that Joe Rogan thing and how he was using um, that word, what's your thought on it, dude? So my thought is... Because um, he's, a, he's a comedian. Right, you know? right, right. You know, if you listen to the... It's, it's all the context, too, but I want to see your thoughts on right, it. Right, right. So Indy Ari had something also uh, about that. She posted... I don't know if you guys saw that, but she posted... Um, well, you know what? Uh, I <laughs> She said, context is huge. I hate taking things out of context, but watch this video. And it was the N-word, I don't know how many times, completely out of context. When I first saw it, I was like, wow, that's a lot of times. You know, that, I mean, the... the well, that video was who? Of who? Uh, Joe Rogan? Uh, yeah, that was of Joe Rogan. Yeah, okay. so yeah, NDR reposted it. Right. But I was, my first thought was, yeah, that was a lot of obviously out of context, but it was still a lot. And I would still not say, you know, he's a racist. I think racism comes from somewhere else, you know? And mm-hmm. I think, yeah, yes, it was out of context, but... It's just, it's seeing it like that. I was like, man, damn. But just like is he responded the same way. He was like, I saw that. And I was like, wow, that's fucked up. And that was a lot, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I'm not going to say he's a racist. No, of course not. You know, I don't know who he is. I don't, I don't know him personally. Obviously, you know, you see like where he comes from. And he's also a comedian, you yeah. know? So the comedians push that line. Right. So I'm not going to, yeah, yeah, man. I, of course I'm not offended by it. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's crazy though. It's a lot. It is a lot. I mean, God, you can see how if you don't get the right side of a story, anything can make you look bad. Right. And then they you know? find stuff. You yeah. Know? But the best part is, is Dave Portnoy from Barstool, uh, Barstool Sports, he got a team together and found people who made that video. Mm-hmm. And did you see how he did that live video with them? Yeah, with the Midas brothers. The Midas brothers. They're the yeah. ones, yep. right? They get paid by the left-wing Democrats to do that shit. Yep. I don't know if people knew that. So they have PAC money that they've been funded for in the past to go after certain political candidates yes. to like smear them online. Right. And, and they did, because they did that to Dave Portnoy. Yeah. They had already right. done it. And they had the video was awesome when it was like, Oh, yeah. They're like, you don't have, basically, they're saying that they don't have any information. He's like, hey, who here's married to Lexi? And then you see one of them's like, his face went almost fucking. He's like, yeah, I got fight. text messages. You talking like that between your friends? You know what I mean. So let's like just stop the bullshit. You know. Did you think that's done anything? Uh, to him, Joe call- Rogan? no, 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 him calling those those the Midas brothers out like that and doing that. <laughs> uh, I feel like if it, if something were to happen, it would be it would have to be publicly. Right, because it's beautiful. They, they work. They would have to like attack each other, like on right. Twitter or some sort of social media. But is that was that a flex on Portnoy to get him to stop? Yeah, I think so. That's my that was my thought because I was watching that video when he said I have you know text messages of you using the N word. He's like, no, nah, you don't got that. And he said, actually, who's married to this lady? And then he, his face went deadpan. Uh, oh, uh, dude, he's like, oh uh, shit. Yeah, and that's uh, and it right at the end of the day, it's like the whole story is crazy, right? Because yeah. it's like obviously, like you said. When I saw the mashup of it, it was a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then it's like, okay, well, it's like, well, he's been recording himself for 12 years yeah, doing was, this stuff. Right. And I've listened to Joe Rogan for years. You know what I mean? And like, I maybe have maybe heard him say it once, but in either repeating a sentence or like, this is what something was written. Wasn't but instead it? of saying the N word, he says, quote somebody, right? Yeah. And so. Now, I don't, you know, I don't know the kind of person he is, but it's like after listening, you kind of get the feel of, well, he's liked by a lot of different people and he's like super tight with people in the black community. So it's like, that would be weird if this were more true, which obviously it's like, you know, like you said, if you spin up a, you know, 10 second clips of everything and you never have any context to what it's saying, you can make anyone probably sound pretty bad. Right. You right. know, and I thought his response was good. You know what I mean? He did like, like you said, Sam, like he was like. Oh yeah, dude. Like I don't even agree with how this sounds. This sounds terrible. You know, I don't. You know, I don't feel that way. And kind of goes through his expl- explanation, which I thought that, that one was better than his first apology. The first mm-hmm. apology, I was kind of like, I'm like, dude, you can tell people to pound sand. That you know I, I mean, yeah, the you, first one never, I would have. He's never have, once, not once, been like, everything that I'm saying for you is to you is fact, and you should imply it in your life. Exactly. Yeah. Never ever once makes it sound like that. And but that's what he gets ostracized for for being like misinformation because it doesn't have to do with the right timeline of COVID or yeah. narrative. which is so dumb too because technically then we've been given misinformation since day one. What yeah. is misinformation? Exactly. When you're what wrong. Is that? <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. What is being? <laughs> well, yeah. I think when there's you're two definitions wrong. because there's yeah. a lot of people who were canceled. Um, their things taken away from them. Their credentials for 
talking about misinformation. So are you going to give them back now? Right. Now that you're saying that they weren't wrong, but you're not saying they weren't wrong. You're just saying right. we know this now. Well, when is, it's mis- like- is misinformation meaning you don't go along with what the major media news exactly. line is? Or is misinformation the true definition of true information? Where it's like, okay, you quoted something wrong. You need to correct that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because in the dictionary, this is what it says. Yeah. It sure seems like the standards are if as long as what you're saying doesn't align with the narrative. Exactly. Not if it's right or wrong, just if it doesn't align. So if I sat there and, you know, we're like, yeah, taking vitamin C every day increases your chance of not getting COVID. Right. All right. That could be misinformation. And then when they come back and, you know, there's no accountability to it because it doesn't have to be because it's as long as it's within the narrative lines, you're okay. Right. But in this case for Joe Rogan, he had some guests on that were not. Not in that in that uh, in that narrative line. I like that he right. had a lot of people backing him. Yeah, did you see the last one? He just, which is totally like in response to this. But the person that was most recently on there, Doctor Olstream, Olstream, whatever, uh, he's very much in a line with the narrative stuff, and but had a whole you know a whole talk about it. And you know, it was it was I listened to the whole thing because I was like, oh, that's interesting. But what I found to be more interesting is that Joe Rogan had some specific questions that he couldn't answer. He just kind of was like, well, this is not my expertise of field. So, you know. Was, was that like, recent? It was uh, two days ago. On uh, Joe Rogan? Huh? Nice. It's dude. worth a listen. It's, 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 it, it's interesting. What about The Rock? Oh, what a How, bitch. I know. What a little what bitch. A- <laughs> what a little bitch. Because you know what it is? The, uh, ah, man. The Rock, some days I, I like, love him. Pussy! And there's little- yeah, there's, there's a lot of days where I like I'm like, dude, love the guy. And there's other days I'm like, dude, you're so bought out. You're so oh, fucking bought out. You're just trying to protect your big ass paycheck. And then like all these clips of him making fun of yeah. other races came out. Did you right. see the one? Of the Asians? Yeah, the Asian one. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, dude, I was like, dude, this is bad. But nothing came no, of that. Nothing ever came of it. Well, same yeah. with Biden when they showed the clips of him and he was using the N word left oh, and right no, as well. We don't need it, so dude. Good. He's straight. Oh my god! Oh, right we don't. Know. <laughs> the, the ironic part of that that clip yeah. is that clip was, and I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just saying yeah, that, no, that yeah. he was quoting somebody mm-hmm. in 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 a, is it, it pretty much was the during same a trial thing? or something? Yeah. Anyways, he because he quoted someone directly, yeah, of whatever he was explaining. But what he said was said the N word twice, and but that was it, right? And so it's like when that comes up and surfaces, it's like, dude, you're. The same things the whole, are happening here, but they're not viewed the same. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like they'll defend that. Oh, but this is this. Okay, but how come you're not saying the same for this when you know it's been chopped up as well? Yeah, I, I just think at the end of the yeah. day, like Joe Rogan's not. He's fucking not worried about it. He's there's fine. no. There's no way he'll be like, dude, no. I make these motherfuckers well, it, so much money. Like, the thing is, too, a lot of these, and that's what they're for. Yeah, yeah. The, the music artists, they don't make a lot of money like he does. They're getting like. Pennies. pennies on the dollar compared to him, but that's honestly just how um, Spotify is set up. But Joe Rogan and his show brings in so much worth and value to Spotify. Oh. Eleven million lip- listeners an episode. Y- you're goddamn right. They're going to give him a hundred million dollars. That's eleven million people fucking listening in every other day to what Joe Rogan has to say. Ads are getting played on there. Businesses are coming in, investing more. And Joe Rogan's um, contract is actually worth almost over two hundred million dollars. Wow! wow. Yeah, this- so I'm like, you, I would say there's probably some jealousy there. People sure. are upset, but Joe Rogan, like, he created that himself. He has no boss. There's nobody over his head. Dude, he does everything himself. Yeah. Doesn't have to tour. Doesn't have to write the music. You know what I'm saying? He just goes on, hits record, and talks to people. And people are getting pissed. And I want to say, go fuck yourself. That guy built that himself. He wasn't handed that at all. He did everything on his own. You're going to try and cancel him and take him down? Like, come on, dude. Or if you don't like it, don't don't listen. listen. (laughs) No one's telling you that you have to listen to it. No one. You know what I mean? So it's like at the bare bones of it, it's ridiculous. But even then so, it's just, it's like the first thing happened with the misinformation didn't stick. And automatically the next week, it was racist. Right? He's racist. Right. You know? And then you have, you know, people on The View talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Damn, remember him in Fear Factor? I know. I know. But here's the thing. <laughs> CNN <laughs> CNN last week, it was a big it was a big news article. The two anchors are talking and they said they said live on the air, we are all out of on ideas on Joe Rogan. There's nothing we can do. Wow. Checkmate. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like good for you. this I love it. I love it. Yeah. It shows like maybe the cancel culture is kind of gone or might not work for everybody. Or maybe it shows at least there's a boundary. 
Yeah. Right. Now you have to, do you have to be Joe Rogan to be able to withstand the cancel culture? Right. I mean, that's, he's like the, one of the pillars. It's of Cause the it's all about community. money. Yeah. It's well, true. it is about money. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. that's the reality of it. Cause it's yeah. all like, I don't know. It's because just, if he it, wasn't bringing in that much, he would have been canceled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Just like if Neil Young had a controversial thing, exactly. they'd probably be like, Neil, you get out of here, you know, but I don't know. It's just crazy. And and you know what's even more nuts is that even in the meantime, there's a country threatening to attack another country, but this takes precedence on the right. headlines. Right. You know what I mean? Like, look at what we're talking about right now. It's like a huge talking point where, like, no. as in world views, like, potential for World War Three is, you know, kind of showing up. So, yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. Speaking of the view, though, <laughs> are we going to talk about? Hey. Um. Yes. So, actually... Whoopi Goldberg was suspended for two weeks, and of course she's all flabbergasted and besides herself because of the stupid comment she made about the Holocaust. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. Well, it's white on white. Yeah, but uh, before we start, <laughs> yeah, um, Jordan, yeah. if you remember, can you tell everyone Whoopi Goldberg's real name? Oh my God! Now, might I tell you, I read an article that um, was written by a Jewish person who was saying that Whoopi Goldberg is appropriating that last name because. As we know, Jewish people kind of run Hollywood. There are big names in there. And she wanted to have a better name that looked good so she could get more parts. So her real name, Whoopi Goldberg, is actually what, Jordan? It's uh, Karen Elaine Johnson. <laughs> She's a Karen! She's a Karen. Her name is legally Karen. <laughs> to her defense, oh. uh, to her defense, it's spelt different than the standard. It's like C- with a Y? C-A-R-Y-N. Oh, well. Saren. <laughs> Saren. It's not Karen, but she's totally a Karen. Yes. she's right? to- So, okay, say her name one more time. It's Karen what? Karen Elaine Johnson. Elaine. Karen Elaine Johnson. So, Karen Elaine Johnson, a.k.a. Whoopi Goldberg, was suspended for two weeks. Only two yeah. weeks. Now, if it was somebody else, say it was Megan McCain, who was on The View for a long time, she probably would have oh. been maybe fired. I don't know. Probably. I'm surprised you knew that name on the view, dude. <laughs> nice, <laughs> bro. Nice, <laughs> nice, bro. Yeah, yeah, look nice, guys. man. Looks like, good. I'm here all day. Sorry. I thought I had to jump in on this one. So like, <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're right. I mean, it just it's lopsided. Yeah, and it's like, remember how quick they jumped on Roseanne? Oh yeah. Oh wow. yeah. Yeah, and she's she boom done. canceled everything. Done. Yeah. Her, and, and then Whoopi, she gets and two now weeks. She's like a, <laughs> now she's like a super lesbian. Roseanne Barr. You're thinking. Oh really? Or not? Are you talking you're about... Thinking, you're thinking of Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie, Rosie O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Sorry, and, wrong one. Yeah, you, I fucked it up, guys. <laughs> yeah, she's always been kind of a super lesbian. Weird. She's, she's, got got that, <laughs> she's got that short haircut with the long like comb over spike thing going. I call it the super les, dude. It's a you know, it's a look. That's cool. It's definitely a look. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, Roseanne, that was uh, what's interesting with that one is because when they rebooted the show, mm-hmm. it had the most views of any television show on at yeah. the time. Course. Right. And then, you know, she was a very popular Trump supporter from yeah. the Hollywood community. And then then all this cancel stuff happened and they got booted. Yeah. Right. Well, she so, said a bunch of shit, right? She was like, she took some medicine at night and was drinking a little bit. Oh, I remember. Yeah. She okay. said some shit. No, it wasn't that she said some shit. She she had tweeted. That's what it was. <laughs> she yeah, tweeted yeah. a picture of a woman. From the planet of the apes. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, ah, yes. It was either a congressman or a senator or so, no. someone politically connected who was black. Or no, maybe, maybe she wasn't black. But she was not white. <laughs> and sent it to her like as She funny. wasn't of a certain shade. Well, she wasn't She wasn't a white person. But I remember because there was some part of the story that that person that she sent it to was not black. But is saying, you know... You so know, she racist got and whatnot, ra- so. yes they, they claim racism and that, that's what it was sorry that was a while ago I was remember that lady going after uh elder or whatever with the black with the monkey mask on oh my with the God, in LA? yeah in la yeah. Eh, nothing happened nothing happened no one's no no big news on it but if it was a democratic um political person and that happened to him end of the world dude oh we got to shut down california State we of need, emergency. We need to keep taking away their guns. Somebody egged an African American politician. Yeah, that's liberal. But I guess it's like the, 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 our show should be just titled titled hypocrisy. <laughs> Sometimes we should we should make a show out of that. Speaking of spell which, spell it with a Z. 
There's you need, <laughs> We'll talk about it after, but you need to get on your Copyright, show. Copyright, you heard it here first. You need to start right well, <laughs> you, when your time slows down. But anyways, uh, so Whoopi Goldberg, her real name is Karen Eileen Johnson. Was that Elaine. What? Elaine Johnson. Elaine. Of course she doesn't get canceled, God damn it. <laughs> does, anybody, does anybody even uh, watch The View, though? You know what? That's I, what I want to know. I'm going to be honest. Like I used to back in the day, like kind of a lot, but I just, it was more like just noise background noise yeah, just yeah. whatever oh i like and i always liked whoopi and i can't stand the bitch now <laughs> I, I don't know what their numbers are i don't even yeah it's probably not a lot but it's probably high for daytime television but it's probably in a predominantly be. like women staying at home right uh maybe i mean that, that would i mean there's I would not assume so there's not one dude on that fucking show Very at least rare. like a, a returning cast member Oh no! It's never been a, a casted like position. I don't think as a as a guy on no. the on the show. But how would you? Could you? I don't know. I wouldn't do well if I had to be on that show. They're like, hey, you want to be on the view? I'm like, no, I don't. No, I don't. It would just be long, long days. You'd be like sweating bullets before the episode shoots. You'd be like, oh my god. You know, <laughs> if I was on, if I was on that, smoking a cigarette. By well, the way, well, they did that with the talk. Yes. The talk used to be all women. Now there's two men on there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You know, we huh. you know if we ever got asked to go on there, I would try to fucking. Dose Joyce Joyce's uh drink, put some edibles or some shit in her fucking food. Uh, can, consensually, can you, obviously. Yes, <laughs> out of fun, out of fun. Like, out I'm of not gonna fun. no. I'm yeah, just no, talking all in good faith. Uh, no, out, out of fun. Just, <laughs> just to see how she would act high on that show. Uh, I wonder how she would do. Probably a lot cooler. Yes. I'll say that much. Everyone on the show. Those you know? glasses I mean, would get darker. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, Cut, I need some more water. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good joke. Can you imagine hard, though? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you imagine I didn't her, get it, to be honest. <laughs> like she's high, she needs water. Yeah, if, so I'm just trying to imagine um, her like, did you give her an edible right before she goes on and it just starts to hit her mid-show? She starts peeking. That'd be amazing. She'd be like, you know, the shit we're talking about, I just don't care as much anymore. <laughs> I'm hungry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's some fruit roll-ups in the back. Oh my God. Did you actually uh, see, there was a comedian, a female comedian. I don't know, you saw that... Um, she was on stage talking about how she's vaxxed and waxed and boosted. Oh, yes. And yes. I'm surprised I didn't have that written. I can't yeah. remember her name. Uh, I don't um, remember. Someone could look that over fast. But she's right in the middle. She's like, oh, I got all my vax and I'm boosted. I got two boosters and I still have my period and all this shit, right? I'm still fucking. And then she goes, oh, and it just passes out. It hits her Gone. head like really hard. Oh, yeah. Like really, really hard on the on yeah. the uh, stage yeah. floor. Oh, Didn't girl. she like fracture it? Yeah, she fractured yeah, her yeah. skull. That's right. And then everyone starts laughing, right? They think it's part of the show. She's like, Damn, she's committed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that. I really I thought that it was like a joke. Like I'm all this, and then like if anything, kind of like doing a jab like, towards those supporting yeah, like she all fake that. Passes that's out. what I thought it was. And then I had to actually read the article and I was like, oh shit, that's was a she hard screamed? fall. She yeah. Went, oh. It's like she knew it was going down. Yep. Heather McDonald. Heather McDonald. That's right. Well, hopefully you're healing up good. Because well, she said terrible. she's not getting another booster. She's done. Really? She yeah. even said that. Yeah. It's uh again. It's just one of those things, right? And it's like I this mean, kind of stuff can come out. I mean, there's all the videos of soccer players and basketball players collapsing. Yeah. And whether it's because specifically from the vaccine or not it's like there's obviously something going on especially with the of these like kind of uber athletes like having potential issues from it but yeah so i have i have right. a little like mystery thing so like the bob saget thing mm -hmm. so we know his autopsies are out now prior to that before the autopsies all came out i know that um one of the questionable things was did he recently get vaccinated or anything like that? And then I guess come to find out it was like three weeks before the incident. He did get like a booster or the vax or something. So I know that was like talk. But then now that this autopsy's out, it's like, what the fuck happened? He was murdered. I think I'm so. I'm just going to say it right yeah. now. You yeah. think Bob Saget was murdered? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. So the, so the there's only no reason, way. The only reason why I said it, and because it was just right, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, oh, some stories like, oh, he just got vaccinated. Or maybe he had something else going on that no one knew about. But when the autopsy came out, the, the, it says that the trauma to the back of his head is congruent with like falling from four stories or getting hit in the back with a baseball bat. So that means there. That means there's like a. It's a what? depressed skull fracture is what he has in the back of his head, which that is not like a. Oops, you bumped your head. I'm gonna lay down to see or how a I feel. Simple slip in the shower. Right to be clothed and like if you got hit, I mean like again I can't say that every time, 
But uh, most of the time, in, in, an ex- in a field that I have experience in, as far as when you get hit in the head like that or have that type of injury, it's extraordinarily rare that you would just bounce back up, take a shower, get your clothes on, lay down in bed. You know what I mean? Like the way that the story sounded like, no foul play, no drugs, no this, da, da, da. And it's like, uh, like he just lay down and had a heart attack in his sleep. It's like, no, this fool got cracked so, in the back of the so head. So you think somehow. somebody broke into his room and cracked him or it happened outside and they took him up? No idea. This is interesting. Well, because they that. were also um, like kind of comparing like, uh, what's Liam Neeson's wife's? Wife. Uh, when she passed, she hit a she, tree scheme, They right? said it was like internal bleeding, so that's what they're saying as far as him. He had the internal bleeding from that. But it's like, I mean, compared to how hard she hit her head, like... That's pretty... You she, know, like, she was hauling ass on skis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She wasn't just rolling back to it, go to just, sleep. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. But how about this plot twist? What if... I'm not saying like... It was just kind of in my mind thinking, but what if the autopsy is like... A cover story. It could be. What if that's not what really, and they just threw that in there? Like what really happened? Yeah, I What's don't know. Theory? Well, that's why, like before, they were talking about um, he had just been vaxxed or boosted. Oh, so maybe to pull away from the potential story of that, Possibly. they would have falsified. I mean, something. I'm not saying that. I was just, but where, it was where just would a he fall from? That high to hit his head? Exactly. And then I guess his family didn't want the autopsy to be released. No, there's they're fine. They filed a bunch of legal papers to keep it. Yeah. You know, for their privacy, like respect our, which I get. That is their privacy, but it there's makes, no oh, forced they, entry, so maybe it was like a in-house well, situation. It, it builds a story in both directions, right? Yeah, it's it either, really does. It's either was it because he got his booster, yeah, and that caused it, and they don't want to talk about it, or is it he was murdered mm-hmm. and we don't want to talk about it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like either way, it's like just it says, or at least the the article I read that was quoting the report is head drama congruent with those things the baseball bat or the fall from multiple stories which means like visible trauma to the head like you know what i mean like it's like uh, yeah because they said nothing the initial report came out and said there was no foul play which means nothing was indicated that he was either bleeding all over the place or had drugs in the you know what i mean like it could have been an overdose or something like that and it said nothing and it it stated they couldn't that there was no no foul play or overdose or like intoxication issues so, I didn't, I see, I didn't realize that they, they said the, the fracture on his skull was that bad. Yeah. Because yeah. like you said, if it's that bad, it's depressed, which means he's going to have a massive deformity to the back mm-hmm. of his head. Right, which would be like if you were an investigator and you were going on scene and you found somebody dead in their bed and you're, you have to at some point be like, oh, okay, feel their head, see if there's anything. Because you have to look at the body or the coroner will analyze the body to build the case. But they immediately said once they found him that there was no foul play. Right, right. Until waiting. Now they did say that they're waiting on the coroner's report because that's what every uh, homicide or death would would have. But just crazy that it was like, no, everything's good. And then because I immediately later, was thinking like, drugs. That was that's I, what I popped in my too. mind. I thought, yeah. I thought and he was, and he, but he was a like kind of outspoken like sobriety guy. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't I, really, dude. Follow I listen, him, so I don't. I, I listen I didn't, to Bob Saget yeah. stuff a lot. Yeah. Like he's like seems like a great, like a cool guy, which is so funny because he's like talks dirty, so dirty in comparison it's to Danny his, Tanner. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean? that's just from part Full of House. his comedic side. Yeah, he's all because I think he had to from being on Full House, being such the nice. I'm guy. the nice, yeah, yeah. And when it's like he's doing comedy, real shit, he's like, man, he just goes for it. Yeah. But it, you look at the stories. The day leading up before they found him, like he was still texting his daughter, calling mm-hmm. his wife, like everything seemed normal. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna go to bed. I got a show in the morning. Yeah. Like how how is he get a depressed skull fracture that bad within that time frame? What does unless, he know? Or unless he killed himself that way somehow. I, like tr- he threw himself off the balcony and then they like scooped him up and put him in the room. Yeah, or, but they only said he had a depressed skull fracture, nothing else. I know it would be like you'd have you'd have other. How do you hide bruises and blood? Like I don't understand how you don't bleed from something like that. Okay, you guys hear those the 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 conspiracy theory with him being involved with the sex trafficking ring, right in Hollywood? Yeah, he's all about it. Maybe no, (laughs) no, I don't. Well, like not about it. Like he was like to fight it, right? Wasn't he one of those guys, or was he like lumped in? I I saw again. It's some stupid video that popped up and was Bob because I. I think they were going off the way that he jokes. He was telling jokes about how a dad fucks his daughter. And someone's like, he's a pedophile. 
And they went on this big conspiracy thing about it. I'm like, dude, he was telling a joke. Now, is it a dark joke? It's very dark. Yeah. Is it my type of humor? Mm, no, I probably won't laugh at that. But people will laugh at it. Some might. Yeah. So I'm like, you got to take context. This guy's a comedian. But it went on to just go into this deep, dark thing. It was pushing it like he's like a part of the Yeah, uh, the, the and he's drinking like baby blood and shit. Oh, uh, the like, adrenochrome? Yeah. I'm like, what? Uh, <laughs> hey, come on, guys. The guy's dead. You, now you release that? Yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting story. I wonder if that one will ever unfold because, as we know, with our career field, we know what it takes to have a depressed cold fracture. It's a lot of force, a lot yeah. of violence, a lot of trauma. Yeah, it would definitely be noted. So, which again, you know, either way, it sucks. You know, hopefully, I would like to think that hopefully it's just some bullshit. You know, like there was an accident. They're just trying to not talk about it. But then, like, my brain was like, well, is it though? Exactly. That's why, well, yeah, I was, I was looking at my notes. Exactly how I thought about it. I was it, looking yeah. at the notes that I got from Danielle. I'm like, what? wait, is there, is it foul play? I'm like, how's it foul play? I only saw it because I only watched one report and I just left it. I was like, hey, he's gone. I watch a lot of crime stuff. Most of the women do. Yeah. You love the ID channel. Yeah. Well, we have to be, always be prepared. Fucking red rum. <laughs> <laughs> we have to. What about us? Uh, we got to be prepared too, man. Yeah, I walk with my keys between my fingers all the time. Are you going to punch them like Wolverine? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Ah. Hey, just so you know, you should try it first. It'll really mess your hand up. <laughs> oh, no, I have one in, uh, I have one on my thing that's like specifically how you hold it. I know, but if you hold it in your hand like this, like you're going to puncture someone in the face. Oh, that. Gonna, it's going to break it's in your hand. Hard. No. And you'll uh, probably hurt yourself more oh, than that. the attacker. You, you know, there's a place. I'll show that, you what I'm talking about. Later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a place online that, you know, it's illegal to sell brass knuckles, but if you sell them as paperweights, you can sell them. I did not know that. Yeah, he makes them. They're, they're paperweights, nice. but they're brass knuckles. I should get some paperweights. Yes. I think those are. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking they're cool. good. To have I got some from Utah. When I went to Utah, I got some brass knuckles. Oh, when yes. I first started driving, my dad gave me a nightstick to keep in my car. But then, like, then he was afraid. What if I get pulled over and to a cop keep in sees your that? Car. Yeah, That's like safe. those batons that, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that T ball bat. Yeah, buy a T ball. You hear me yeah. out. You know, my mom. I, t- I was talking to you the night. It was the night I sent her that. You guys see on my story. I sent her the picture of that like demon nun. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your mom. <laughs> Send it to my mom. Right, yeah. Right. But we had just got done talking, and she was telling me how she's looking online for, you know, a police style stun gun, the one that shoots out. And I, I was just like, I, it's probably mean, but I told my mom like, Mom, I'm gonna be real with you, okay? I said, one, no man's gonna want to take anything from you. You have nothing to offer them. <laughs> she's like, well, they might not want to rape me, but they might want something I have. I'm like, <laughs> Mom, no. Two, it's like you're seventy fucking years old. Two. For your reflex time <laughs> to pull that fucking thing out and sh- and shoot somebody who's trying to hurt you, I was like, you're going to be dead. <laughs> there's, there's, Don't waste $500. She's like, I need to protect myself. I need it. I was like, Mom, I'm, t- I'm not trying to be mean. I'm like, there's no way you're going to be able to handle that. The panic that's going to go through your mind and you having to aim that thing and shoot it across at somebody, it's like, it's not going to work. Good luck. Yeah, it's not going to fucking work. Uh, Seems like a very high stress scenario. Yes, to be in to actually go for a taser and then to deploy it appropriately. I yeah, like I would end up shooting myself in the leg or something. <laughs> I'm stop! I hit myself right in the chin. Oh, no, I feel take like, my money. I feel like my hands go in immediate like claw mode. Like, okay, whatever you do, I just know I'm gonna dig my nails so far and get your DNA in my fingernails. So at uh, least somehow they find wow, it. Even after death, you're being creative. Yeah. Right, yeah. thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to make sure they find your DNA all over. But <laughs> your DNA all over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I was just having a conversation with her. I'm just like, Mom, stop being so afraid of, of it. I'll skin off somewhere. Because <laughs> she was like, she was taking my niece to go ice skating. I guess mm-hmm. there's, as we know, there's a huge bum problem in California. And she said there's a bunch of bum. I'm like, Mom, not every person who doesn't have a home is out to fucking attack you. Right. I'm seeing a lot of young, younger people now, oh, more and more, it's and like sad. families, That's like sad. at least. Well, look yeah. at the pri- look at what it costs to live here in SoCal. It's incredible. It's there was a report like yesterday. I think it was Channel Seven or no Five. Maybe it was Five. Anyway, it was talking about homeless, uh, like uh, assaults are up. Like homeless assaults on like non-homeless people are up like. Like newly homes, newly homeless people. Not just meaning that these people are not like I agree with you. Not everyone is going to rape and take the, the their possibilities money, there, but just still be somewhat cognizant of your surroundings because uh, because it does happen. And the 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 stat I was just talking about is that it's up quite a bit from what it normally would be at. Mm. I feel like it's just 
there's a look, there's a lot of homeless people and they too probably are frustrated at a certain point as well. Yeah. And it's like if they're not getting a steady flow of stuff, well then what a, it's just a natural reaction, I think. You do what you think you, you know, should do to survive. Yes. And survival it, instincts. Yeah, and whether it's drug influenced or not, you know what I mean? People are gonna do some wacky shit. So when I hear that it doesn't like surprise me. It's just unfortunate because there are so many and we're not really Doing anything about it? Yeah, all of all our taxes. What what's happening? How come these programs aren't working? How come we're blowing our our tires and rims on these holes in the road? Huh? All the gas tax. How come these roads are still so messed up? Come on, guys. The crack pipes, Tim. The crack- <laughs> I, I knew it. I was like full circle. <laughs> yeah, full it. circle. I knew uh, it. Uh, I was back. waiting for it. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> the crack pipes, Tim. Yeah. That's a simple answer, Tim. It's because of the crack yeah. pipes. Damn it. God dang it. Well, hey, we got some. Let's get some questions going. All We're right. gonna wrap this up. All righty. All right. So, uh, no. Uh, okay. Uh, this one was an easy opener. Is it better to watch the Super Bowl at home or at a bar? Ooh. Ooh. I like at home. Because then I can get really it trashed. It depends on who the crowd is with me at the bar. Because probably I, I agree. That could be that could be a lot of fun. Exactly, yeah. I agree. Yeah, could get a little coyote ugly. Mm. You know what I mean? At the Super Bowl party, coyote ugly themed. You guys are crazy. Uh, the, Jordan, you haven't me. gone out with me often. I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. That sounds no. I think uh, I think I like them both equally because I do like the environment. Yeah, like at I a bar, like, like if you're with a bunch. Because like I did that a lot when I was younger, and that's all I did. So. Many years of fun time, Super Bowl parties at bars. But then I also love being at home. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, yeah, I could, like you said, I can have fun and yeah. not worry about having to go anywhere. You know you're safe. That's and my I'm thing. safe. And yeah. yeah, no one's going anywhere. And you can pig out on like a ton of shitty food, which is what I did this year. I made homemade nachos. It turned out bomb. Oh, nice. Yeah. But who hasn't answered yet? Did everybody answer? Yep. Oh, I got a question. This All is off pod deck on my it. phone. <laughs> <laughs> what website do you visit the most? Oh God! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. Probably Hyper. Yeah, um, yeah, Google. There you go. There you go, Jordan. Oh. Solid answer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you want to check my history, dude? Tell me I don't go on Google you, every time I turn every- my phone. <laughs> fucking pussy. Everything but Google. Fuck you. I want to know what website do you visit the most, and you can't say Google, fucking Yahoo, no Bing. I want to hear it right now. Non search engine website visited most. Yes. Mm. It may or may not. I'm going to go first. Mine is Buzzsprout, where I upload all our fucking podcast shit because I'm all, it's that and YouTube. I'm always on there having to fix and change things to get stuff uploaded right now. All right. My third one, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> wow. Mine's all over the place. Mine's like, like, dad and daughter. Jeep stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeep stuff. <laughs> Woo! Dad and daughter. I've been just shopping for like Jeep parts lately. <laughs> so. oh, I would say honestly, my browser is gonna say YouTube no Coco Melon. Huh? Okay. I watch a lot of. Uh, well, my phone I don't watch because I give it to my son all the time. Uh, but it's Coco Melon on YouTube. <laughs> it buys me like five minutes. Like here you, you go, here you go. We gotta do this real quick. <laughs> anyway. Hyperwolf. Hyperwolf. Mm-hmm. Oh, shout okay. out. <laughs> all right. You ready for the last one? Yes. Um, let's see here. All right. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Were you ever really passionate about something, then suddenly lost interest? What was it? Were you ever really passionate about something, and then lost interest? Yeah. And then suddenly lost interest. What? What? What was it? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I would say. Like, I hate it. M- like my art. Cause I like it's so effortless to me, but I all when people like actually see me do art, they're like, "Why don't you do this more often?" Right. And I'm like, "Because I've always been artistic, but I feel like I could pull it in so many directions. Like I used to be a hairstylist. I thought I was gonna be super passionate about that, and I was like, eh, I'm over it now. I'm just a dog stylist, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm more passionate about that and the things I create with that. But I could paint, I could draw, I can, I." Lately, I want to say more my art has been writing, mm. stuff like that. Oh, I like so, it. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I mean, but if you see my work or read my work, you would think it's a passion. Mm-hmm. But it's it's what ups to me. I could put it down and not look at it for who knows right. how long and then just jump right back into it. Because it's bigger to you. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's, yeah. It provides more value mm-hmm. than just, you know, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Nice. 
Oh, this is like a deep answer. I know. Right. What are you <laughs> passionate about? Okay. Yeah, the first thing that pops in my head, uh, I had like an invention that I still have, but Ooh. I was really into it uh, in the beginning, like developing it, like kind of. Is it the disposable stuff. necktie? No. <laughs> that would okay. be sick though. <laughs> it's actually a medical device, so I don't know how, how deep I want to get into it, but it works really good. And um, I did a bunch of research on it and I really thought that I had something going there. And the next step, I just didn't take the next step. You know, I needed to get out to either a company that helps like small invention stuff, like get pushed. And, you know, I just, uh, I still think it is completely uh, like it would work today. Uh, Cause for what it is, like a device, it's like a, how do I put it? It's like a device to help with like uh, nebulized administration for pediatrics for respiratory issues. Mm. And uh, just what they have in the field suck and what they tear at the hospitals suck. And I feel like this would like work really good. And nothing like it exists, right? Uh, no, as uh, I mean, I, I've scoured through all the Google patents and everything like that um, because it's uh, it would be like a utility patent. So I'm not like inventing the distribution system. I'm in dif like I'm differentiating in the way that it would be distributed. Oh, okay. And so it'd be like anyway. Long story short, I was really into this, thinking that this was gonna be like ah, oh, this is my out. Like this is gonna hit. <laughs> and. Um, I don't know. I'm I just, rich. I just no. It was just uh, the next steps took a lot of like a lot of grinding. Like mm -hmm. it really did, and I kind of it fizzled out on me, and I always kind of put it on the back burner, like thinking, oh, maybe one day, I can, uh, you know, kind of pursue this a little bit. But anyway, so that's my yeah. story. <laughs> yeah, <Jeez. Hell. laughs> that's my story. What were you websiting? <laughs> what, websiting? No, I, was up, I, was, I was looking up more questions, but I don't want to bring any, or. Uh, I'm not going to ask any mm -hmm. questions, but something you're passionate about that you slightly <laughs> lost interest. Uh, I'm going to say right now my master's degree, and I'm forced to finish. Mm. So I signed a contract to pay for all of it. Uh, it's education. It fits fucking terrible. I'm trying to be like Sam right here and yeah, get, bro. get it done. I mean, I only have seven classes left, but it's... Only. It definitely feels like it's seven millennia. Right, only. <laughs> exactly. Mm, mm, mm. That's no. like 20 years for me. Oh, right. my God. I don't know. Like, yeah. why in the hell did I do this? Yeah. Well, hey, before we wrap this up, <clears throat> I would like to say to Sam and myself, happy Black History Month. Woo! Yeah, baby. That's, That's right. Baby. Us. Yeah. <laughs> happy us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can wish you a Black History Month happiness, too. Like hey, you know not... what? I think hey, this you. is thank like... Hey, dude, it's Black History Month. I think, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think this hey, is like five. a... <laughs> I, I think this is like a year anniversary for us on the reviews, because I remember... Oh, the first one was February. Yes, yes. And I remember being mad that we didn't bring it up. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, right? Because wow. at the end, we were like, like hey, no minute. one said anything. I know. <laughs> hey, ring the bell, Bunch guys. of racists. Hey, this is one <laughs> year. This is huge. Yeah. Wow. Look at us. That's amazing. Look at us. Wow. And I haven't got us canceled yet. <laughs> <laughs> Been on good behavior. Oh, my God. Well, hey, yeah. Well, that being said, um, I really enjoy doing the month review with you guys. This is one thing I look forward to every time at the yeah. end. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. A lot of laughter. So um, I like the pregame. Yeah, and I know from our audience, <laughs> our audience says that they really enjoy the review the most, actually. So, well, that's, congratulations, people. That's awesome. Well, that's really cool to hear because I feel like these are like the most, like, they're all fun. Right. But these are like, just we just go up and have fun with it. You know what I mean? Like, and like, laugh. if you look at all the shit we were talking about, there's a lot of really important things on here that we kind of tend to just have fun throughout the conversation with. So that's really cool. I mean, I look forward to doing it, too. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I like the pregame. Yes, we'll leave it at pre -game. that. <laughs> Did someone say? <laughs> I think it just Did someone pre say pre? <laughs> <laughs> well, happy, oh, hey guys. Honestly, happy one year to all of us. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, we couldn't do this without you. You guys, I think we make this. The podcast is just me or, or Jordan, but we have a huge team that make this possible. From editing to the monthly review to Sam operating the cameras and. Um, it's good. It's we got a solid, solid thing going here. So, because I get so many DMs of people, can I come co-host? Nope. <laughs> Sorry. What about you with us when we're small? And I can be this when we're big. <laughs> what about uh, like hearing from them, like stuff they would want to hear us talk about? Is and maybe encourage that? Or we something. can. I've tried. Yeah. It's hard to get responses because they're kind of late. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and if we try the live thing, that's really tough because um, you can't edit out certain things and people could fuck with us really hard on that 
Oh, because I was just going to say, we can run the Instagram live or any kind of social media platform live, but it you would. You can, but you can, you it have would, no control. That yeah. can get interesting. Yeah, so. and people could screenshot it as your... I don't know yeah, what you guys you know. are talking about. We don't do anything crazy here. It's also true. <laughs> yeah, hide. This is tea. Oh, this is a pretty really, clean Jordan? room, this okay? Is uh -huh. is pretty clean. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Had another cup of tea. Let's get a let's go in three, guys. One, two, three. Let's, let's go. go. Bye, everybody. And that's it. Thank you for listening in, everybody. I'd like to thank our sound engineer who makes this podcast happen and makes us sound very good, Stephen Clark. And to our first sponsor, 8-9 Barbers. Look good, feel good, be great. Come get your haircut at two locations, Long Beach and in Orange, California. Your appointment can be booked at 8-9Barbers.com. That is E-I-G-H-T-N-I-N-E-B-A-B. -E -B, excuse me, B-A-R-B-R-E-R-S. 8-9Barbers.com. Again, look good, feel good, be great. Check it out. It's my barber. He is the man. Thanks, everybody. Bye.